Hi, everyone that's already joined, everyone is coming in. Um, I am Montres Lucas, Associate Director of Patient Navigation here at NEFCURE. Thank you all for joining. Um, as the Associate Director of Patient Navigation, which is a mouthful for NEFCURE social worker, um, I am charged with assisting patients in the eradicating disease community with financial resources, emotional and mental health support, um, previously genetic testing, as well as give, make sure they have access in general. Also, 504 plans and in general school accommodations for our RKD youth and various other resources that attempt to make their lives um, a bit easier and their journey with RKD a bit easier. So in this role, um, I have been extremely blessed to meet friends and make partnerships with different organizations such as North, which is the National Organization of Rare Disease, and my new best friend, Jill Pollander, who is the <laughs> the Vice President of Patient Services at NORD. Um, and she has an amazing new program that has rolled out um, specifically for IGAN patients to help them um, both with um, premiums and co-pays as well as um, better access when it comes to financially um, with all medical issues. So I want to introduce to you all our friend, Jill Pollander, Vice President of Patient Services at NORD. Thank you, Montrez. I am so thrilled to be here, and I thank you for the invitation to join you and the NEFCURE community tonight. Thank you. I wish we had applause tape or something, Jill, for you. You deserve it. Oh, yeah, that would be <laughs> lovely. Right? We'll just pretend. <laughs> so, Jill, can you tell us a bit about your role at NORD, um, as well as just give us a general overview of this program? Sure. As Montrose said, I'm Jill Pollander. I'm the Vice President of Patient Services at the National Organization for Rare Disorders, or NORD. I am a nurse by trade and training for more years than I care to admit to at this, <laughs> point, at this point. My background spans from the emergency department to long-term care. I have a specialty in pain management and palliative care. I've worked in academia and medical malpractice. And about five and a half years ago, I had the opportunity to tie all that up in a bow and come over to NORD and lead the patient services division. And they're better and, for it, Jill. Oh, thank you. You are so kind. Well, patient services at NORD is really made up of three teams. It's patient assistance, mm -hmm. information and resource services, and clinical trial support. Across those three teams, I have 25 wonderful team members, and we provide assistance across the rare disease community to about 10,000 patients a year. Sometimes it's about financial assistance. Many times it's about financial assistance. But as all of you who are, have logged into this program know, Sometimes what you need is some information. You need a breadcrumb trail. You need to know what to do next or where to start or who to call or how do I find somebody who's got a diagnosis like mine. And so my team is dedicated to finding answers and resources and helping the community to access those. So like Montrez, it's about access. It's mm -hmm. access to necessary care and treatment. From the patient assistance side of things, well, we know there's 7,000 plus rare diseases and only about 5% of rare diseases actually have a treatment. Mm. And so a big part of my role is making sure that for disease states where there is a treatment, we can facilitate access to that treatment. We can facilitate access to care. We can facilitate access to specialists and things that will make your rare journey a little bit easier. Thank you, Jill. And I want to just piggyback off of that and say that NORD has been an amazing resource hub for everything rare disease and in particular with help in our community. A special shout out to Alicia um, at NORD who has been a close confidant since I started at NEFCURE and has really helped our rapid kidney disease patients get very disease specific resources like the IGAN patient assistance program that we'll be discussing tonight. Um, 
at the how the flow of this will go, you all is I'll ask um, Jill some questions and about the program and about what's to come at NORD as well as the criteria to basically um, be approved um, for assistance. And towards the end, I will share my screen that will show these two different programs in one. And I will also leave 15 to 20 minutes at the end of this for a question and answer portion where our audience can ask questions to Jill about um, these programs and how to either qualify for them as well as I'll ensure that everyone at the close of this knows how to access both of these programs and know how to apply for them. Okay, you're ready, Jill, off to the races? I'm, I'm ready. Okay, so um, Jill, Question one, please tell us about NORD's new IGAN patient assistance program, its purpose, as well as how it intends to help patients with IGAN. Sure. So we know when you have a diagnosis like IGA nephropathy, you're juggling an awful lot of things. It's complex. What's also complex is the fact that now that there is a treatment available, an FDA approved treatment available, how do you access that if it's appropriate for you? Obviously, your, the decisions that you make about your care are those decisions that you and your healthcare providers make. But when you are trying to financially access care and treatment, these programs are designed to facilitate that for individuals who meet certain eligibility criteria. And Montrez mentioned that the programs provide assistance for premiums, that's health insurance premiums, copay costs, and those copay costs may be for doctor visits, they may be pres for prescription costs, they may be for laboratory tests, other diagnostics, could be copay costs for supportive therapies that your physician prescribes for you. But there are other out-of-pocket costs too when you have a rare diagnosis. Out-of-pocket costs like travel to a specialist appointment overnight lodging because you need to see a specialist that's out of state. There are out-of-pocket costs that health insurance doesn't cover. You may have really good health insurance, but suppose you need a supportive therapy and your health insurance covers six visits, but you need 12. So it looks at what are the other out-of-pocket costs that you might need. Are there urological supplies? Are there services? Are there specialists you need to see? And so I can't give you an exhaustive list because we're going to look at on a case by case basis, those things that your physician prescribes for you specific to your care. And if it's specific to the care and treatment of IGAN, it would be covered if you're eligible for assistance under the program, which of course begs the question. Yes, I know. I know where you're going is who's <laughs> eligible. No, but I love that, Jill. I want to say I love that. It's nice to get in early. As it, I've been a social worker for 10 years and a little over 10 years. And prior to that, I mean, I was a manager of social work at Emory and a few other entities I've worked at. And oftentimes you come in and it's a very strict criteria that's given and you miss one spot or something like that happens. There's no flexibility. What I love about this program is it being new is that you all are looking for what people are needing is a needs assessment as opposed to a strict concrete criteria that oftentimes a lot of patients, especially in our community, for whatever reason, don't fit and need the assistance the most. So I do, I love that about what you're doing. So it's important to understand that patient assistance is a very regulated industry. Mm -hmm. And so eligibility for assistance in the program does carry some strict criteria. And those criteria you have to have a confirmed diagnosis of IGAN. If you have something like IGAN, even if you're on the same medication as individuals who have IGAN, you're not going to meet the eligibility for this program. We'll help you to find resources, but eligibility in the IGAN program requires that you have a confirmed diagnosis of IgA nephropathy. Mm -hmm. You have to be a U.S. citizen or permanent resident for six months or more. And you have to meet financial eligibility criteria. Now, I know that might sound a little bit onerous, but we have contractual and proprietary software. We yeah. basically can enter just a couple of pieces of information on the computer and the computer spits back at a high level what's called an electronic income verification. Mm -hmm. That basically tells us is where you are at or below the federal poverty level. 
we use for at or below 400% of the federal poverty level. I can't just give you a flat number because it depends on your household size and the state that you live in. And so for those of you who want to apply for the program, we'll give you contact information for the program and you'll be able to apply. But the EIV tells us where you are with regards to at or below 400% of the federal poverty level. If you are at or below 400% of the federal poverty level, that is a pass. You win. <laughs> you, you, you meet the financial eligibility criteria. If you don't, we're not going to just say, oh, sorry, you don't qualify. What we'll do at that point is we'll have you filled out with, fill out what's called our detailed financial form. I promise, not as onerous as it sounds. I really should rename it something like George or Scott, Fred, Susanna, <laughs> something that doesn't sound so scary. We'll have you fill that out. And you submit that to Nord along with your most recent tax return and three months of bank statements. Mm -hmm. And with that, we can do three additional financial eligibility tests. If you meet the financial eligibility based on any one of those tests, you'll qualify for assistance along with those other pieces, the having the confirmed diagnosis and being a U.S. citizen or permanent resident. If you don't meet the financial eligibility based on those three additional tests, we'll help you to try to identify other resources that might be more appropriate for you or for which you may qualify. Or you'll have the option to reapply when, if and when something changes for you. With regards to that coverage, we're then going to have a conversation with you in terms of what are your needs. Do you need help paying for your health insurance premiums? And what do those costs look like on an annual basis? Now, some of you may be on a family plan for health insurance. The program will only cover the patient's portion of the health insurance premium. So if, let's say, you're diagnosed with IGAN, but your spouse and your children are also on your plan, we're only going to cover your portion of the plan. We're going to talk to you about what are your prescription costs? Do you use a specialty pharmacy? Where do you get your get your medications? And what are the copay costs or coinsurance costs that you have? We're going to look at that on a monthly basis, on an annual basis. And we're going to look at what other needs that you have. Are there certain medical supplies that you need? How many times do you see the see the physician in a year? What laboratory tests do you have and how often do you have them? And so we're going to try to figure out from a financial aspect what your need is for a calendar year. And we're going to do our best to meet as much of that need as possible within the program. So as a social worker, I mean, you have, this sounds like a amazing, like, beautiful utopia compared to what, what resources I and historically been able to provide because what I hear to paraphrase is you know the requirements are of course you're U.S. citizens for six months or more um and of course you have to have a confirmed IGAN diagnosis but also I guess the best part about this is that that financial component is more individualized as opposed to in a very strict umbrella where it's like you have to there's only certain types or a certain strict income. I think that that, that gives a great deal of hope for um, our patient community. Though we understand it's regulated and everyone will, of course, will not be approved, it does give a bit more wiggle room to say other traditional programs that have rolled out before. What we're gonna do is give, give individuals every opportunity to qualify for assistance. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it is very regulated. It's we, we are consistent. We're transparent. We are compliant with all OIG. That's the regulatory body with mm -hmm. all OIG requirements and guidances. But that said, we understand that you can have a substantial income, but still have expenses that so tap that income that you may not be able to meet all of your financial needs for your care and treatment. So within that compliant regulatory framework, we're able to perform up to four eligibility tests. It's the electronic income verification. 
its federal poverty level, its financial means, and its assets versus liability. Mm. And if you meet the eligibility in any one of those four tests, we're going to be able to offer assistance. And like I said, there are individuals who will not meet the eligibility, but we're going to help you to try to find other resources. And Montrez mentioned Alicia earlier. Alicia leads our information and resource services team. And it's her and her team who are tasked with sort of going down the rabbit hole to find those resources that you and I might not, not be able to find in a simple Google search. So true. She does a great job at it. Well, thank you for that, Jill. Thank you so much. Um, can you, do you have any, of course, no names or anything like that, but do you have any examples how this program has been effective thus far? Sure. So I think one of the things that we hear from the rare disease community on a regular basis is how do I find a specialist and how do I get an appointment with a specialist? So NORD has Rare Disease Centers of Excellence. This is a relatively new program we rolled out about a year and a half ago. And we have 40 rare disease centers of excellence across the United States. So we're able to put you in contact with the Rare Disease Center of Excellence and help you to find a rare disease specialist that may be appropriate for you. And under the IGAN program, we may be able to help with travel and lodging costs if you need to travel to go see a specialist. So that's a big need that we hear. Probably the big, two biggest financial needs are health insurance premiums and prescription costs. Yes. And I see that the greatest utilization of the program have been with those two items followed by the travel and lodging to see a specialist or to access care. Those seem to be the biggest aspects. And it's not that one is more important than another, because again, for each individual, the need may be slightly different. Yeah, I agree with you. I definitely see that too, it's in working at NFCare in general, that, that that tends to be, I found this great specialist, I need help though getting there, the lodging. I mean, that, so I'm, I'm glad that, that this program is proven effective in that way um, in particular, but I'm also glad it's open to individualizing its funding uh, a well, bit I more. Think, I think it's really important. You know, sometimes we're contacted by somebody who says, I don't have health insurance or I can't afford health insurance. We're going to help you to find health insurance that's appropriate for you that's going to best meet your needs because we do know that individuals who have health insurance do receive better care and do have better outcomes. And that's one of the reasons that the expense of health insurance premiums is rolled into this program so we can help you to access or maintain your health insurance. You, they do have better outcomes when individuals are insured. Of course, of course, of course. Um, also, the application process, you've kind of linked into that some. And by the way, anybody who's recently joined, I'm going to share my screen at the end to basically show this information, as well as I will also share it with um, everyone that has registered for this um, call and, and all of our IGAN pages in general. I'll make sure that you all have this resource. But I will share my screen um, towards the end, the end of this um, chat so that you all can see in black and white basically what me and Jill are speaking about. Um, but as far as the application process, after, after a patient or a family member or, or a parent has applied, what's the turnaround time for regarding a decision? Great question. So first of all, you can apply online. You can go on, right on our website, uh, rarediseases.org. Click on the financial assistance page. Scroll down. You'll see IGAN, and there's a button that says apply here. You can apply right there online. For those who may not be computer savvy or may not want to apply that way or might need some assistance walking through an application, and I promise it's not a really difficult application, but you can certainly contact the NORD program directly. And Montrez, when he sh shares the flyers, will share the program uh, information in terms of contact. But if anybody is anxious to write it down, the program phone number is 203 309 3276. So you can contact the IGAN program directly and we'll walk you through the application process. It's five, 10 minutes on the phone. The piece that might take, that 
tiniest bit longer is we need to get verification of diagnosis from your phys your treating physician. And we send mm -hmm. the treating physician a form to fill out that confirms your diagnosis. Y'all can prompt the studio audience by reaching out to your doctor and saying, Nord just faxed you this form, please fill it out and complete <laughs> it. Send it back as soon as possible. <laughs> You know, a little yes, prompting yes, sometimes helps. We have to with our doctors. We love our doctors, but oftentimes we we're so busy that we have to definitely chime in and kind of push it a little bit. Um, exactly. I've also included in my name um, here my email address. So if you all also have any questions about this program after this, even after I share the screens and provide the resource to you all via email, um, please feel free to reach out to me for any following questions. And I'll make sure to reach out to my good friend here, Jill, um, for the accurate answers. Um, so you've already went over the, the criteria for approval. Um, you've also discussed to some extent disqualifications for approval. I'm assuming, I'm assuming, say that I'm a patient that I'm suspected to have again until I have a for sure documented diagnosis. I don't quite qualify for this program, correct? That is correct. That is correct. But you're in your journey. And so... Maybe you need access to certain diagnostic tests or you need access to a specialist. We may be able to help you to identify someone or help you along that journey. Nord is home for 7,000 plus rare diseases. We are the umbrella organization for rare. And so individuals who are undiagnosed have a home with us and have us as a resource just as the rare disease community does. You know, NEFCURE is a phenomenal resource, and I, I'm not taking anything away from, from the resources and information that they have available to them, but we sort of are the umbrella. So whether it's kidney disease or you have someone who has an autoimmune disease, or you also heard from somebody who has another rare diagnosis, or you've got a colleague or a coworker, we're here. And so please don't hesitate to reach out. A great starting point is our website, rarediseases.org. It has a plethora of information, uh, educational information, does. resources. See, he did. there you go. There you go. So um, I know you went into a bit about this. This is probably a little off but I want to make sure you had a chance to explain this. Um, it's this IGAN patient, this is program. If, if, I joined this and I have, say, instead of FSGS. Can you go into a little bit why this program is, of course, now rolling out? Um, there's a chance, opportunity for other programs that will run out for rollout for other RKD patients. Sure. So NORD is a 501c3 charity. We are 100% dependent on donations for the financial assistance that we provide. We've got about 90 patient assistance programs running right now. Um, many are disease state specific. I wish I had 7,000 plus programs to, ass to assist every rare disease. You we do this, try. <laughs> <laughs> I got faith in you. <laughs> oh, you're a good man. Uh, so we do try to open new programs as funding becomes available. And again, the website is a great resource to see what's available. And we continuously are looking to do that. And so we try to open programs. Obviously, all are centered around rare, but not all are related to kidney disease. They may be autoimmune. They may have to do with uh, neurological disorders or uh, central nervous system. They may be sleep disorders, uh, orthopedic. They, they really run the gamut. And we try to open programs on, you know, as I said, as funding allows. We also have some programs that I call rare disease agnostic. So they cross the rare disease spectrum. You don't have to have a specific rare diagnosis in order to meet eligibility criteria. You have to have a rare diagnosis. And so an example of that is our rare disease educational support program. That program is open to all rare rare disease patients, and it provides financial assistance to attend rare disease conferences, workshops, educational programs. It can be rare disease specific or, or it can be more generic. And so that's, again, an assistance program that we provide that crosses all rare diseases. We have our rare caregiver respite program. 
We know that for some rare diseases, they require a lot of care, and it requires a family member, a significant other, or a loved one providing that care on a near 24-hour basis. And so in support of those caregivers, significant other and loved ones who are providing that care, we have this respite program that provides some fin a financial stipend so they can hire a respite caregiver so they can take a well-deserved break. Mm. It's it's a really impactful program for those that need I'm it. I'm you know, meet the eligibility for that. So we try on a continuous basis to look at what are the unmet needs in the rare disease community and seek to provide resources for those unmet needs. I think the beauty of, of what you all are doing at NORD, as well as what we do at NEFCURE, it's almost the Venn diagram that has that overlapping um, oval, is that we are in this very flex spot um, and it's always a developing and always and ever-changing to fit the need of the patient. It's not this archaic kind of a stick, like this is how it's gonna go, this is all Trying we have. Trying to make everyone fit in a box. Right, come on, come off, you don't fit and go home and we'll pray for you. Instead, it's more of a sense of, we are trying to lean into um, more so now, I'll, I'll get right with you, um, Ms. Page, but it's more so now, um, about what's the need and how can we best, best say um, serve the current need as opposed to an outdated need that may have statistically proven itself to be realistic at one point that no longer is the truth. So I'm really happy to hear that. I'm really happy to hear that there is so much that you all are constantly coming up with and changing. Um, also, for anyone who's just joined, I've sent in the chat um, Nord's website, which is rareDiseases.org. So please go there and please navigate that website. Please completely um, skim it and look through it for anything that may apply, for, apply to you. And please feel free to, feel free to reach out to me at NEFCARE at my email here um, that's in my name. And I'll also share my email again. If you have any questions about any of the disease programs or any of the financial programs or arrested programs like Jill just mentioned that you'd be interested in. So feel, please feel free to reach out to me after you research and look at that website and let me know if you're interested in any of them. And I'll of course bug Jill and my good friend Alicia um, about anything that you all may be interested in. Fair enough. Um, and um, before we get to the questions, I had also another question um, as well. What are your hopes for the future of this program, Jill? I know that this is very close to your heart. Um, so what are your hopes for this moving forward? My hopes are that we're able to provide access to care and treatment for individuals who need it. It's, it's a short answer and it's a pat answer, but that really is the goal. And mm -hmm. that's going to look different for different individuals. But we really want folks to be able to access the care and treatment that they need so they can live their best lives. I think you, I love that we share a lot of the same purpose and a lot of the same goal set. So thank you for that. Um, as well as I agree with that, I echo that as far as that goes to, and as, as well as this program, I think that this program is really gonna lend itself to that goal as well, Jill. So thank you for that. Um, and also overall, what are some new patient programs, events, initiatives that NORD has coming down the pipeline? So I know we're just about coming up on the holidays, but I'm going to skip a little bit ahead. And as many of you know, every year in February, the last day of February is Rare Disease Day. And so NORD will have lots of events and lots of exciting things scheduled for Rare Disease Day, all of which you'll be able to access and see on the website. So again, I'll send you back there again. But Rare Disease Day is an opportunity to spotlight Rare, to get involved. And if you do want to get involved, whether it's from an advocacy standpoint, from a legislative standpoint, from a just showing your stripes, it provides opportunities to do that. There, there is a running for rare team. There are fundraising opportunities. There's all kinds of things that we can do to support the rare community. And so I'm looking forward to that in February. That's a, that's a big event for the rare disease community on the whole. And then 
The next big event that comes up after that is our Living Rare, Living Stronger Patient and Family Forum. Um, every year we move that around the United States. In June of this, no, June of 2024, we're going to be out in Los Angeles. Last year we were That's in Washington, D.C. What's that? That's exciting. It sounds like our patient summit. That's exciting. It is exciting. And by moving it around the country, it makes it more accessible to patients throughout yeah. the country. And so we've really tried to do that. And there are a lot of opportunities to get involved for those individuals who want to. If you don't want to, you don't have to. That's perfectly <laughs> fine. But we do want to make those available for those who want information and the opportunity to, to get involved and be heard. Thank you so much, Jill. And also, like I said, again, I, I hate to sound like a broken record, but please, I've shared their website in the chat, rarediseases.org. Please navigate the website. The, the events are there, as well as please feel free to reach out to me if you need to know about any of these events or you're interested in attending any of them or you have any questions about any services that Jill has mentioned or you see one of the numerous um, services that um, North has to offer that we may not mention throughout this webinar, please feel free to navigate them and do a bit of research and reach out to me if you need any, if you have any questioning assistance in applying. Um, at this point, Jill, what I'll do is before we start the questions, I want to share my screen and have you basically give up a quick overview of each program, the medical assistance and the um, premium and copay program. So sure. I'll start with the premium and program. Let me see. Can you see that? There you go. There we go. So this is the premium and copay program, um, which falls under the IGAN patient assistance program. Jill, you'll give us a little oversight on this. Sure. Not so close. this this arm of the IGA nephropathy program is for individuals who have health insurance and need into need assistance with the expense of the health insurance and the out-of-pocket costs associated with co-pays and co-insurances. We talked about the eligibility. You have to have a confirmed diagnosis of IgA nephropathy. You have mm -hmm. to be a U.S. citizen or permanent resident of six months or greater, and you have to meet financial eligibility criteria. So this side of the program is going to assist with those health, with health insurance premiums and the costs associated with co-pays and co-insurance. Both, so, both arms of the program can be accessed from a single phone number, and that's 203-309-3276, or you can email us at igaNephropathy at rarediseases.org. You can go on the website, and when you go on the website, when you click on the button for financial assistance, all of the financial assistance programs are lift, listed alphabetically. So you've got to scroll down a little bit. When you get to IGA nephropathy, there's a button that says apply online, and you can fill out the application right then and there. On the flyer, you can see a list of some of the uh, expenses that are covered under the premium and copay program, medical office visits, uh, specialty consults, out-of-pocket costs for labs or radiological services, mm -hmm. um, physician-prescribed supportive therapies like uh, physical or occupational therapy, and other out-of-pocket expenses that are associated with co-pays and co-insurance costs. And that's really what's covered under the premium and co-pay arm of the program. If you want to flip to the medical assistance one, we can talk a little bit about that. I did want to say before we switch that one thing, sure. one question I may have not asked that I think is really important to know is that when, when you're granted um, assistance, that these awards are issued for a calendar year. I think that's a big um, deal. I think that's amazing. So I definitely wanted to make sure you all know that. And also um, go ahead and read where, what Nord is saying. Patients are encouraged to reapply annually if continued assistance is needed. Um, and of course, program assistance is dependent on funding availability. But the big one from here is that awards are issued for a calendar year. So if, if any of our patients or anyone's on the call um, or anyone who you may know that may have not been rejoined the call, please let them know that these awards are issued for a calendar year. So I think that's a big deal that maybe um, we have not quite covered yet. 
And I will go to the next one. And that there's was a the question piece. while you're oh. flipping to that, there's a question in the chat of what states are rare disease states. All states and U.S. territories are considered rare disease states, but the phrasing in the flyer is rare disease state. It's like a rare disease diagnosis. IgA yeah. nephropathy is a rare diagnosis. Um, you know, other rare diagnoses like uh, narcolepsy or PKU, those are considered rare diagnoses. And you all, please know, I will, I promise we'll get to questions in just a second. Um, Right now, we will now go and discuss medical assistance, um, sure. the medical assistance um, program within the umbrella of the IGAN program by NOI. Sure. So in the medical assistance arm of the program, those are for individuals who are uninsured or denied coverage. You're insure, you may be insured, but your insurer may not cover certain aspects of necessary care and treatment. And that's what's covered under the medical assistance arm. So it might be things like travel and lodging assistance to see a specialist. It can be things that Let's say your health insurance doesn't cover supportive therapies or covers very limited in terms of laboratory tests. If it's denied coverage or it's not covered by health insurance, but it is directly tied to the care and treatment of your IGAN diagnosis, it may be covered under this program. Medical supplies, we know that health insurance doesn't always cover those. And so that would be covered under this arm of the program. And um, to echo what Jill said before, this is the same contact information, correct, Jill? Correct. As well as the application, um, these are just the phone number, that's the fax, as well as that is um, the e um, email, mm -hmm. as well as this is the address. Um, so once again, this will all be shared to you all via email. I'll make sure that you all get that, as well as you can also reach out to me if you have any questions or you need this information. Um, and it, if it gets lost in translation, of email, which a lot of my stuff does, so I understand that. Um, is there anything else in particular you want to speak about this one, Jill? I think that about covers it with regards to the specifics of the programs. Okay. And once again, I want to make sure I echo that this is also um, an award that's issued for a calendar year and that a patient would have to reapply um, once being granted. Correct. Okay. So now is question time, Jill. And for okay. every note, oh, well, someone's asking me to scroll back down. I will share this again. And once again, you all, I will send this in an email to you all that registered for this um, to make sure you all get this resource. But I will scroll back down in the interim. So once again, Awards are issued for a calendar year. Patients are encouraged to reapply annually if continued assistance is needed, and program assistance dependent on funding availability. So I see a question. Let's. Oh, okay. Okay. Once again, by states, this is every state. Um, There's just the state of, of rare kidney or rare disease that um, this probably refers to, is what um, Jill was saying. And also, um, from Ms. Page, what is, what if, I guess what she's saying is, what if I have IGAN and in stage, in stage five kidney disease, um, and dialysis for say 19 years, would that, I guess you're asking about eligibility, Ms. Page, um, would that patient be one, as far as that diagnosis, Jill, I guess she's asking, would she be eligible for this program, one of these programs? So IGA nephropathy is the, diagnosis that's required for eligibility in the IGAN program. If you have a diagnosis of IgA nephropathy, you may be eligible. Again, the additional criteria have to be U.S. citizen or permanent right. resident and meeting the financial eligibility criteria. We talked a little bit about compliance, and one of the things from a compliance standpoint is that programs are not artificially narrowed. And what I mean by that is it's not going to have a specificity like you must have a diagnosis of 
Have you all heard the commercials on TV? Um, HR positive, HER2 negative, XYZ, <laughs> failed three therapies, yeah. and, and, and. Yeah. So it's not going to be what's called an artificial narrowing. It's going mm -hmm. to be based on the disease state, which in there's the disease state. And the disease state for this program is IgA nephropathy. So yeah, so if and so with a patient having IGAN and say ESRD, that patient would um, seemingly qualify, um, but it just has to be a confirmed diagnosis of IGAN. Correct. So if it, if the diagnosis is end stage renal disease, that is not going to qualify for participation in IGAN. There has to be the IGAN diagnosis. But it brings up an interesting point, and thank you for asking that question. If somebody has IGAN and diabetes, we're yeah. going to pay the expenses related to IGAN, but we're not going to pay the expenses for diabetes. We understand you may also have expenses related to that, but the program is specific to care and treatment for the IGAN diagnosis. That is a great point. So yeah, so they're, 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 so that basically NORC will pay for those that are affected um, with IGAN and have a confirmed diagnosis. And Ms. Page just asked, um, which, hold on a minute. Well, you all keep asking, I'll, I'll read. Um, Ms. Page, the answer to your question is yes. Um, you would still basically qualify because you do have an IGAN diagnosis, but what um, Jill has said, which correct me if I'm wrong, Jill, that if you do qualify, what will be um, covered will be the those costs that um, are affected by your IGAN diagnosis. So, and anything covered, say you have IGAN and diabetes, or IGAN and another um, a, a rare form of cancer, or anything like that. What's going to be paid for is those costs that are affected by your IGAN diagnosis. Right, and yeah. those are things that. Once an individual meets eligibility criteria for the program, we can discuss on an individual basis. So rather than sort of going through each um, iteration and, and all of the, you know, sort of nuances there, it sounds like that might be a more individual conversation. But the eligibility at the high level, the sort of foot in the door is you have to have a diagnosis of IGAN. And, and as far as um, premiums, it we do that's the premium and copay program. With given an IGAN diagnosis, meeting the financial criteria, the one thing that may seem a bit um, unique to you all who are in who may be asking this question is what is the what is the financial criteria? It's not a a typical program in the way that sometimes we were faced with these very stringent criteria, where it's very obvious that. If you make this, you only get this. It, it definitely takes into account your income. It, it takes into account your family size as well as the state you live in. And so what I encourage everyone, who everyone is to apply and then see if they're able to qualify. And oftentimes what, what Jill just said was if you don't may not qualify for funding, there are other resources that they may be able to assist you with. And so it's not something that it's very individualized as opposed to a generic in general. If you make this amount, you will not receive funding or assistance. It takes into account your unique situation. And so as far as financial criteria, it's more individualized, which I think is beautiful, Jill. Um, chef's kiss. I mean, so just, so, so, yeah. so just from a compliance standpoint, it's not that it's individualized, but we're going to give everybody, give individuals every opportunity to meet that financial eligibility criteria. It's not a moving target, but based on having four financial eligibility tests, depending on your unique situation, you may qualify for that financial eligibility piece. And for individuals who do meet financial eligibility, I saw in the chat, somebody asked about, uh, about Medicare premiums and yes, Medicare premiums are covered under premiums. So whether you have, um, Medicare or Blue Cross or Blue Shield or Aetna or Anthem or Medicaid. Health insurance premiums are covered in the premium and copay program, but it's only premium assistance for the individual, for the patient. So if you're on a family plan um, because you're employed, let's say it's only going to cover the patient's portion of the premium. 
Correct. And if the rest, um, I think some of the questions are not specified as far as like income. I I think that's the reason why we're we're really pushing people to really apply so that you all different are different, right? Yeah. Different different family sizes in different states have different answers to the question. Correct. So I can't get you can ask me all you want. I can't give you an answer. Every single state is different and it is dependent on family size. So we're happy to, to take you through the process um, and, and to help you with the application. You can, as I said, do that online. You can do that on the phone with one of my, one of my staff. They are fabulous. Um, and they'll walk and talk you through all of that. So that's kind of where that lands. I can't give you a one size fits all answer and you don't want me to. Believe me, you don't, you don't want, want me to. I know, Jill, I agree. And I, I I mean, forgive me for the individual comment, but I definitely want to lean into more like, this is not your um, everyday typical, that this is the criteria that I, as far as like, it is very, it's not as generic as that goes. It's far more, it's, it's thought more about need space and it's leaning into what's happening now in the IGAN community. So please, as far as like um, individualized, maybe questions as far as income goes, please understand that though Jill and myself would, um, are really trying to lend ourselves to that, we can't because you could possibly qualify um, or not, but we really encourage you to really apply so you can get a thorough look at this and have someone to really look through things so they can really give you an honest answer that fits your situation as opposed to a generic, criteria question. I'm very, I'm very much of the belief that in the rare disease space, we hear no a lot. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to give people a no if there's a way to get to a yes. So true. That said, the only way that I can continue and Nord can continue to be here for patients is to do it right. And mm -hmm. we do it right with each and every interaction. And so that means we must follow our process. Sometimes that requires more documentation than you might think is necessary. But in order for us to do it right with each and every interaction so that we can ensure that we're here for you and for the community, it means we have to do it right and we have to follow the processes. Agreed. Agreed. So I, I will say it again. Please feel free, feel free to reach out. And I'll also send these to everyone who registered all this information so you, that you know how to apply so that, and we encourage you all to apply. Even if you think you don't qualify, I really think it would be wiser for you to apply to at least see um, and have, have Jill's team as well as um, Nord to really look through and see um, who could possibly benefit from this program who may think they traditionally wouldn't. Um, anybody have any other questions? And I think you covered the one medical premiums from um, William Reed, um, as far as that goes, yes, they would be covered if they are related to, um, well, they would, your Medicare premiums would be covered as long as you meet the criteria and you have a confirmed IGAN diagnosis. Now, Jill, I do, I see one question that I'm very interested in seeing how you answer as well and see how like this fits. If, how do you, how would you, if I have in-stage renal as well as say IGAN, as this patient says, how does NORD, how does NORD decide what services they will, what things they'll pay for if I'm diagnosed with both? I can see how there's some overlap and make some maybe some crossover. It's a good question. Mm -hmm. So if it's not clear cut, what we're going to do is we're going to reach out to your physician and say, is this being prescribed for the treatment of Susie or Montre or Jose's IGAN diagnosis, or is this being prescribed for end-stage renal disease? And so if we can't make the differentiation, we're going to ask the physician and the healthcare provider, he's, he or she is the expert, and they're going to let us know what is the reason this is being prescribed. And we see that sometimes when um, more in the rare cancer space, where an individual may be prescribed things like um, an immunosuppressant because of a transplant. Well, is the trans it, the transplant is due to the rare cancer, but is the immunosuppressant being 
prescribed for the rare cancer or is it being prescribed for the diagnosis? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we have to dig into that a little bit. And my team is very adept at doing that. And we'll communicate with the healthcare provider and we'll set, you know, we'll ask the question and we'll seek that clarification. Is this service or is this therapy being prescribed for the care and treatment of IGAN? And if the answer is yes, it would be covered under the program. If the answer is no, it's being prescribed because of their diabetes or their heart disease or what have you, then it would not be covered under the under the program. And so sometimes it can get a little bit nuanced. Um, and again, I have a very talented team and they're very good at that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jill. Sure. Um, for Mr. Reed, um, who says, I have no familial history of IGAN or kidney issues at all. Um, is there, I guess the question would be, um, we would, it would have to be where there was a confirmed diagnosis as far as your own, if you're, if you're re reaching out for yourself or joining because of yourself, then it would just, to go back to what Jill said earlier, you would have to yourself to have the eye gain diagnosis. Or if you're a mom, for example, who's um, joining and has a, a child who has eye gain, then that's a reason to apply as well. Or a family member, if you're coming in trying to get information about a loved one, a brother, or sister, or whoever have you, or you're the caretaker, um, that patient, you basically applying for that patient on that patient's behalf. So it's not you having to have a history of eye gain or kidney issues. But if you yourself, um, Mr. Reed, are again, a patient diagnosed with IGAN, have a confirmed diagnosis from a physician, then that is one of the qualifiers for this program. Exactly. There have been some great questions. Thank you, everybody. I agree completely. And so just so that we um just so that we give more of a general overview as well, um I wanted to also just make sure that you all knew, once again, I will be sending this out, as well as um, that the assistance provided is some examples of the, the expenses that um, Nordis may help out with if you qualify for these programs are medical, medical office visit or consult, out-of-pocket costs for medications prescribed by your physician to manage your IGAN diagnosis, out-of-pocket costs for lab services or diagnostic services, Physician prescribed supportive therapy such as nutritional consults, expenses for travel to IGAN related medical care consults and appointments, um, and urology related medical supplies. So that's a big, um, if you do qualify, that would be an amazing help for you, I'm sure. Um, and I really, really encourage you all to apply. We have another, I, I guess we have another um, statement from Mr. Reed. He, I was diagnosed with eye gain two years ago and started dialysis a year later. I've spent the last, the past three years just researching reasons why or how. It's something that is unfortunately lacking with this disease. Thank you for the information. You are so welcome, Mr. Reed. Um, thank you so much as well for joining and sharing that. And NORD and NFCARE, of course, are here to help you. So please reach out for any assistance you may need, um, even outside of this program. NORD has much more to offer as well as we do here at NEFCARE. So please feel free to reach out. I know that we're all here to support you. Anyone else? Okay, if you have any other questions, I will once again, if, if there are some of you all have not met or we've not crossed paths whatsoever, once again, I am the Associate Director of NEFCURE, uh, Associate Director of Patient Navigation here at NEFCURE, and I help out with a plethora of patient services, as well as Jill is the amazing Vice President of Patient Services at NORD, and she's the one who's brought this um, great program to us and has partnered with us with getting patients um, assistance who have again, who are in the rare disease community in general. I've sent my email out again, as well as my name. So if you have any questions following this that may be more um, specific to your diagnosis or your issues or the criteria or how to apply or anything at all, please feel free to reach out to me and no questions too much or um, no question is foolish. So please feel free to reach out. 
Jill, thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation. It was lovely spending some time with you this evening and getting to meet uh, some of the NEFCURE folks. So I really do appreciate the invitation. And please don't hesitate to reach out to NORD. Uh, rarediseases.org is sort of a great gateway to all of the programs and services that NORD provides. And we're here to help. So thank you for your time. Thank you so much. And I've shared in our chat as well um, the, the, the website for NORD as well, rarediseases.org. Thank you all for joining. I really appreciate you all. And Jill, I will definitely follow up with you um, and we'll be in contact fairly soon. I'll look forward to it. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you.